Well, what a blessing. So thankful he's always there to lean on. Thank you, Lord. You know, sometimes we forget that, I think, and we try to go our own way and do our own thing and think we have the answers, but that's a valuable message. We need to learn to lean on him. Amen. He's promised that he will always be there, and we can always lean on him and trust him. I'm so thankful for that. And I've got to say, it, it really blessed me and touched me to hear that song this morning. The Spirit really used that to touch my heart, and I, I thank God for that. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you, God, for another time you've given us, Lord, to gather in your house. I thank you, Lord, for each and every one that's gathered here. Lord, I thank you for the blessing, Lord, we've already felt, for your sweet Spirit, Lord, that came and touched hearts. I pray, Father, now as we look into your word, that you would be the one who delivers the message. I pray, God, that you would take this body of flesh, Lord, and that you would use it for your honor, for your glory, for your intended purpose. Lord, help me, God, to remove myself and speak only that that you would have to be spoken. I pray, God, that you would open hearts and minds, that you would give each and every one that that they need here this morning. Lord, whatever is accomplished, Lord, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, there's a, there's a massive storm on the horizon, what you might call a superstorm. It's a storm beyond any ability to measure the impact and the devastation and the destruction that's common. And storms have been rolling through and rolling through and rolling through, but there's one that's out there on the horizon that's coming that's going to beat anything that we've ever seen, that's going to be more powerful than everything we've ever imagined. And it is coming upon this earth. And there are only those who have trusted in the Lord, only those who stand in the Lord are going to be able to withstand this storm that is coming. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit this morning. We're going to start in the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 32. I'm going to begin at verse 1. The Bible says, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. I'm going to stop there just for a minute and back up because I want to make a point here. I want everyone who hears this message, I want you to really open your ears. Open your spiritual ears. Open your heart and allow the Spirit of God to speak to you. Because just as it says in here, my doctrine shall drop as rain, my speech shall distill as the dew. Because it's not my doctrine. It's the doctrine of the Word of God. It is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And this is what you need to hear. Uh, you know, I've been told that I read a lot of Scripture, and, and when I stand to speak that I, I read a lot of Scripture and go to a lot of places where there's a reason for that. It's because the Word of God is what carries the power. It's because it's the Word of God that carries the message. It's not my stories. It's not my experiences. It's not my doctrinal extrapolations that will do anything for you. It is the Word of God. And that is what you need to hear. And this is what I want you to hear this morning. As you said and you listen to this, as this Word comes into you, open your spiritual ears, open your heart and hear what it is that God is saying. Because if we will accept what it is that God is saying, it is like a dew that will fall. It's like the small raindrops that fall on the tender herbs and give them what they need. It's a light, gentle rain that will give growth to that plant that will allow that root to get down in and take a hold if we hear the word of God in our spirit and we accept that that's what it is. But if we refuse to hear it, if we will not accept it, it is that storm that is coming. It is a gully washer. It is so powerful that it will 
uproot the plant and it will take them out of their place and it will bring destruction rather than growth. It says in here that he is the rock. God is the rock. And his work is perfect. All his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. I'm going to tell you something. We have come to a place. We have a generation that has turned away from this rock. That has looked for something else. That has accepted a different doctrine. They don't want to hear this doctrine that I'm talking about this morning. They have come up with a new doctrine and a new way. It may be the doctrine of prosperity. It may be the doctrine of go along to get along. It may be the doctrine of if I speak it, it's mine. There's all kind of different doctrines out there. Everything is acceptable. Just love everybody. You know what I'm talking about. You can think of them for yourself. But unless it is the doctrine of God, the rain that is going to fall isn't going to be that dew. It isn't going to be that light gentle rain. It's going to be that storm that is coming, that is going to uproot, that is going to destroy, that is going to tear down. Because it says here, he is the rock and all his ways are judgment and every one of us is going to be judged whether we are found to be in the way in his doctrine or we are not as I said, we have come to a place in history where people are turning away from this doctrine. We have a generation that will not accept it. What does it say here? They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do you thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee. They won't ask. They won't listen. They won't hear. And we have some that are still left. The fathers and the elder generation who have seen the power of God, who have seen the working of the Holy Spirit, who were raised in the right ways and in the right doctrine. But he talks here about a generation that has become foolish and don't understand and know the ways that God has brought into this country, that God has brought into his church at one time in this country. They won't hear what we have to say. They won't listen to our experiences. Just like the children of Israel, those who were brought out began to fade away and the younger generation that came up accepted other gods and turned to other things and they wouldn't hear the elders. That's what we have in this country today. We have a generation that won't hear the truth. What does the Bible say here? Ask your fathers. Ask the elders and they will show thee, but they will not hear it. Their heart is far from it. And because of that, just like I read here, he is going to judge them. Judgment is coming. All his ways are judgment. Let's go, go further in that chapter. In verse 18 it says, Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. They are unmindful of the God that made them, that brought them out, that set them up. And just as sure as he brought the children of Israel out, he brought this country out of a wicked world. He set up this country, and he set it up with his laws and with his doctrine and with his guidance. But they have turned from that, and they have forgotten that. What he says here is, Thou art unmindful of him that has begotten thee, of him that has set thee up. You have turned away and forgotten the God that made you who you are. This country has forgotten him. This country has forgotten where they came from and how they got where they came from. And because of that, that storm that I was talking about, that is out there on the horizon, it is coming, and it's picking up speed, and it's coming faster, and it's coming faster. Storms have been rolling through. We can see the devastation that is coming, the things that are happening to this country, the things that are going on in the financial system, in the educational system, in the governmental system, in the judicial system, in the church, in the religious system. We can see the storms rolling through one after another after another after another but there's a big one coming bigger than I can explain to you as I said it's so big we can't measure the devastation and the destruction that it is going to bring with it but and it is just going to unleash in fury on this country but there is a hope 
and those that accept this hope will stand. Though the storm rages around them, though the storms of life are raging, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how hard it comes, those who accept this doctrine, this doctrine of the Word of God, this doctrine of the God that set up this nation, if we accept that, we will stand. We will not be moved. Just like the Bible talks about that tree that is planted by the rivers of water, it shall not be moved. It shall not be moved. It will stand no matter what happens. I want to go to the book of Matthew and read you something very familiar. Book of Matthew, chapter 7, beginning at verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. Just before I go any further, Luke talks about this same thing, but in Luke 6, 48, he adds this. He digged deep and laid his foundation on a rock. This man digged deep and laid his foundation on the rock. And we'll go on. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Amen. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. We have got to build our house on that rock. So when that storm comes, we cannot be moved. And I don't know how many times I'm going to say that, but I'm telling you there's a big one coming. And if you're not founded on that rock, you are going to be swept away. You are going to be washed away. You are going to fall. And great is going to be your destruction. And I wanted to make this point what Luke said. That man had to dig deep to lay his foundation on that rock. He had to go deep into the word of God. There is a solid rock down there. There may be layer upon layer upon layer of sand over top of that. Put your house on that sand just because that rock is down there somewhere isn't going to do any good because when that storm comes, that sand is going to wash away. There are those who are teaching you today that, yeah, they had the word as their foundation, but they added some of their own stuff on it. They piled some of their own ideas on it. They've taken some of their own doctrine and placed on it, and then they built it on top of that. Well, that ain't going to do any good because when that storm comes, all that is going to be swept away, and that house that is built on that is going to fall just like that little kid's story, song that we sing, and the house on the sand went flat. That's exactly what's going to happen to those who have built on any other doctrine other than this doctrine that I started off telling you about. The doctrine of the rock. The doctrine of the rock is the only one that will stand. The Bible said back there where I read it to you, he is the rock and it is his doctrine that you have to build with. It is that rock that you have to build on or when that storm comes, you are going down. It will stand on nothing but this and this alone. This is the only thing that can withstand that storm that is coming. As I've already said, we have seen storms rolling through. Look at the destruction and the devastation that's going on. Men are running around here, hearts failing them for fear of what is coming down the road because they can see it too. There is something devastating on the horizon and they're falling now with these little storms that are coming through. What's going to happen when the big one comes? They're going to be wiped out. They're going to be destroyed. There is going to be no hope for them. What did Christ say here? We have to build on that rock. He who hears these sayings of mine, he who hears this word of mine and builds on this are the only ones who are going to stand. You can't build on anything else and expect to stand when that storm comes because it will take you out. That's a guarantee on the authority of God's word. It is the only thing that will stand. It may sound good. They might throw in some scripture. They might tell you some nice things. But just like I said, if they're piling all that stuff on top of the word of God and trying to build on top of that, it is going to be washed out and you are going to go down. This is what you have to build on. You have to dig deep like it said there in Luke that when you want to build that house, you have got 
about to dig deep and be established and have a firm footing. Your foundation has to be on that solid rock because it is the only thing that will stand. Amen. And I want to tell you something. There are those out there that will tell you, all you've got to do is accept this. All you've got to do is believe what I'm telling you. Say the little prayer and your life is going to be sunshine and roses. It's going to be butterflies and balloons. Everything's going to be peachy keen and you're never going to have a problem. That's a lie straight out of the charcoals of hell. The Bible says in this life you will have tribulation. It's going to happen. It rains on the just and it rains on the unjust. Even hear what Christ said, the man who built his house upon the rock, the rains came and the winds blew. You're going to have that in your life. You're going to experience some rain. You're going to experience some wind. But here's the good thing. It cannot take you down. It cannot take you out. You will be able to stand through it all because we have that one they sang about that we can lean on no matter what comes, no matter what happens, no matter how bad it gets. If we're built on that rock and we're leaning on those everlasting arms, nothing can destroy us. Nothing can take us down. Nothing can take us out because we are founded on that solid foundation. It's the only thing that will stand. It's the only thing that can make it through those storms. There is nothing else. I don't care who tells you what. I don't care how many theology classes you go to. I don't care how many books you read. I don't care how many tapes you listen to or how many TV shows you watch. I'm going to guarantee you something. This is the only thing that will stand. Nothing else. According to the word of God, heaven and earth shall pass away. Everything in the earth shall pass away. Every idea of man shall pass away. But my word shall never pass away. And if you want to stand, you better be standing on something that is never going to be moved. That's the only way you're ever going to make it through. I want to go to the book of Nahum, chapter 1. Break in at verse 3. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. I love that little scripture right there. He has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and as I said, it's on the horizon, and it's coming. He's walking down this way. He's heading this direction, and he is in control of everything that is coming. Just like I've already read you, all his ways are judgment. In that storm that coming is judgment, and it's going to try every man of what sort he is, of what he is made of, of what he is standing on, of what he is built on. And when that storm passes through, if you're not built on that solid rock, if your foundation is not built on that solid rock, when that storm passes through and moves on, where you once stood is going to be nothing. It's going to be desolation. It's going to be ruin. But those that are built on that rock, those that are on that solid foundation are going to stand strong. They're going to be standing there when that storm passes through. Have you ever seen these pictures of when a tornado goes through and there can be houses all around laid flat and for whatever reason, right in the middle of all that destruction, there stands one that didn't even get touched. That's me. When I stand on that foundation, when that storm comes, though everybody around me may fall, though they all may be destroyed and taken out, when that storm passes through, I'm standing on that rock and I shall not be moved. It can destroy everything around me, but I will stand. And you can too. If you build on that solid rock, if you lay your foundation on that solid rock, but I've got to repeat this, you've got to dig deep. It's not a surface thing. It's not just a Sunday morning thing. It's not just a put your name on the roll thing. You've got to get deep. You've got to dig down. You've got to lay that foundation completely on that solid rock. Amen. He goes on here in Nahum. He says, he rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry, and dry up all, all the rivers. Bashan languishes, and Carmel, and the flower of Lebanon languishes. The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. 
Who can stand before his indignation? Who can abide the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. I want you to get a picture of what is coming. This is that storm that I was talking about. Everything that is here is going to be moved. Everything is going to be tried. Listen to this description. His fury is poured out like fire. The mountains are going to melt away. The rivers are going to be dried up. The flowers are going to wither and die. The trees are going to be up when he pours out his fury, when he unleashes his fury, everything is going to be moved. The rocks are going to fly like sand in a windstorm. It is a horrible, awful judgment that is coming. And listen to what the Bible says. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. Get a picture of that. This is what is coming. This is what is on the horizon. It's not too far down the road. And unless you're founded on this rock, unless you have dug deep and built your foundation on that, this is what awaits you. And no one who is not founded on that rock is going to stand. I don't care how smart you think you are. I don't care how much you think you know. I don't care how long your family's been in this. I don't care if you built the church. I don't care if you donated billions of dollars to the church. Unless you're founded on this rock, you are going down. Nothing will stand. You will fall. Come on, right, amen. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. I got a mark on me. He placed a mark on me, it says. This is one of mine. And when that storm passes through, it cannot touch me. It cannot harm me. It cannot hurt me. It'll go around me and may get one over here. And it may get one over here. One in front of me and one behind me. But it cannot touch me because he knows the one who are his. I want to read that again and I want you to get it. The Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them that trust in him. Thank you, Lord. A thousand may fall at thy right hand and ten thousand at thy left, but it shall not come nigh thee. That's a promise of God. It shall not come nigh thee. Though the storms of life are raging, though hell pours out everything hell can pour out, when God pours out his judgment and his fury, when that storm that's on the horizon gets here, he knows those that trust in him, and it shall not come nigh them. The wind may blow and the rain may fall, the lightning may flash and the thunder may boom, but those who have built on that rock, those who are founded on that foundation, shall not be moved. I want to tell you something. If you're not sure, if you're not built on that foundation, there may be people sitting here or people who are going to hear this, that you've been a church person. You know, I've heard a lot of people describe that way. Well, he's a good church man. He's a good church person. And I talk to people and ask them, you know, are you born again? Why go to church? That's not going to do you a bit of good. Amen. You can be the best church person in the world. You can be a church man. You can be a church woman. You can be anything like that you think you want to be. And when that storm comes, it's not going to do you any good. You better be a child of God. Amen. You better be a blood-washed, blood born blood again child of God. Because that's the only thing that is going to stand. Amen. Church ain't going to stand. Nothing is going to stand but those who are sold out to Him. Those who have dug deep. Those who have put themselves on that rock. That is the only thing that's going to stand. I wish I could paint you a picture of this devastation that's coming. Oh, this world and on this country and I think especially on this country because just where I started out I'm going to tell you that I know this for a fact. God founded this country. God built up this country. God established this country. He founded it on his word. He founded it on his laws. He founded it on his morals. But just like I was reading back there in Deuteronomy, they have forgotten God. They have turned away to other gods. They won't hear those who have experienced they won't listen to the elders who know what they're talking about, who have experienced God. They think that's all foolishness, and they're just going to reject all that. 
and they got them some new gods. They got the God of love, and they got the God of tolerance, and they got the God of prosperity, and they got the God of unity, and they got the God of this, and they got the God of that, and they turned away from the God. They have turned away from the rock. They have turned away from the one who said he is coming in fury, and he is coming in judgment, and his fury is going to be poured out like fire, and they think they're going to stand on these other gods, on this other foundation they have built, but they are not going to stand. You can take a look around, just go turn on your news, read your newspaper, listen to the radio. Destruction after destruction after destruction is coming. Tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes and flood and pestilence and drought and everything that you can imagine is going on and on and on, one right after another. There never seems to be a break. And you better just pray that that's as bad as it gets because there's a whole lot worse coming. You think the things that are going on in nature are bad. You wait till the spiritual things start hitting. You wait till the demons are turned loose on this world. They can have been dabbling around a little bit. But there's coming a day when they're going to be loose, when all hindrances are taken off, and they're just going to come in, and they're going to take over. And it's going to be evil beyond anything that you can imagine. And not only that, God's going to begin to pour out his judgment. And God's going to begin to pour out his fury. And this whole world's going to be reeling, and it's going to be rocking. And the Bible says there's coming a time when every mountain will be laid low, and the islands will be moved out of their place. Hey, it's going to be something that I can't explain to you, and I can't describe to you, but I pray that the Holy Spirit gives you a picture of what's coming, and that's what's in store for you, unless you are built upon this rock, unless you are founded upon this rock. That's what's waiting out there for you. There is nothing else that will stand, nothing but this doctrine. This is the only thing. I don't care what you've been told. I don't care what you've been brought up believing. You better get in here and understand the truth. You don't have to believe me. Believe this. This is the word of God. And this lays it all out. And this spells it all out. Get in here and understand it and believe it and build on it. So when all of that comes, you will be able to stand. Come on. It's going to get bad. I, I can see it. I'm not saying I'm prophesying, but this is what I see. Our financial system is going to collapse. Our educational system is going to collapse. It's on its way now. Just open your eyes and take a look. Our government is evil. Our government is wicked. And I'm going to tell you something. When a government of a nation is evil and wicked, God removes his hand of protection. God removes his hand of mercy. God removes his hand of blessing and this is just the beginning this is just a drop in the bucket of what is to come if you can't see it it's because the devil has you blinded you need to get in here and clear up your vision this will clear your vision this will show you clearly what the truth is and what is coming just look out there turn on your news Watch what's happening. I've already talked about all the things that are happening in nature. What God is doing with nature. That's horrible. That's bad enough. Look around the globe. It's not just here. It's everywhere. All those things that I was talking about in nature. And on top of that, you got disease. you got people out there going nuts and just killing and murdering and maiming and raping just for the thrill of doing it for no reason other than that they are inhabited with evil. And that's just the beginning. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. And once everything collapses, and men are running around killing each other for a loaf of bread, when men are running around killing each other for a nickel, that's what you've got to look forward to. And there's only one hope, only one. There's only one way to escape the wrath that is to come, and that is to be founded on that rock, that rock that is Jesus Christ, that rock that is the Word of God. That is the only way to escape what is to come. Listen to this in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. I love that. That's an invitation. Is all this stuff eating you up and worrying you and bothering you and driving you nuts 
and you can't sleep, and you got stress, and you got heart problem, and you're just so sick with worry, and you have to go to the doctor all the time to get them little pills that'll calm you down and make you feel all right because you got anxiety, and you got depression, and you got all these other things going on. Come rest with us. You don't need all that stuff. Amen. You don't need no pill. You don't need no psychologist. You don't need no psychiatrist. You don't need no financial advisor. You can just come and rest with us. Rest in the arms of that one day we're saying that, that you can lean on when these hard times come, when these troubles come, when these problems come. There's one that will just take you up and hold you. And you can just watch it all go by. And again, I want you to understand this. I'm not telling you that nothing's ever going to come in your life. It's going to rain on you once in a while. The wind is going to blow once in a while. But here's the guarantee. Here's the promise. If you're built on that rock, it cannot destroy you. It cannot take you down. Nothing can come nigh you that he doesn't allow to come nigh you. And I'm going to guarantee you this. In the midst of the worst thing that you're ever going to suffer, he's right there. Always right there. Amen. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Right. There are so many wonderful promises of God. If you will just reach out and accept what it is that he's offering to you. I love that scripture where he said, I want to read that again because I really love it. To you who are troubled, rest with us. Just come. There is rest in Christ. No matter how hard the world is reeling and rocking and tossing to and fro, no matter how bad it gets in the financial system, in the government, in the education, no matter how bad the things of nature do, no matter what pestilence comes, no matter what disease comes, you can come and rest with us. Just put yourself in His arms. Just give yourself to Him and take that rest. Bible says in Luke chapter 21, there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things that are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That's happening right now. Men's hearts are failing them. They are so eat up with worry and grief and despair. And it just, it's terrible. It's awful what's going on. But Christ has reached out his hand to you and he's saying just what I read to you there. Come and rest with us. In the midst of that storm, in the midst of that fury, in the midst of that judgment, you can have peace. You can have rest. You can have comfort. Because you have a guarantee. You have a promise that cannot fail, that cannot be broken. That if you're founded on that rock, that if you have built yourself on the Lord, that if you have founded your life on that foundation, that storm cannot move you. That storm cannot rock you. That storm cannot destroy you. I, I beg you, if you're hearing this, I want you to really listen to me. And you may have been brought up in a different way and taught different things. I, I know it's a big thing out there now to believe that, well, God's just old-fashioned. That religion that you're talking about is just old-fashioned. And, and, and it's just, you know, for back then, we're different now. We're more enlightened. We're more intelligent. We're smarter. <laughs> well, the Bible says right there where I started out, you need to ask the elders, those who have seen the power of God, those who have experienced God, those who have felt that touch from God, those that know the Word of God, you need to hear it, what it is that they have to say, that God is the rock, and God is a God of judgment, and that storm that's on the horizon is coming very soon, and it says that He's going to pure out his fury. His judgment is going to come in a fury. And if you remember those things I read to you, it's going to be a fire and things are going to be tossed and turned and turned inside out and flipped around and upside down and laid low and all those things. You need to hear what it is that the Spirit of God is calling out. The Spirit of God is calling to anybody that will hear this. Come and rest with us. Come so that you don't have to be destroyed. Come so that that fury, that storm that's coming doesn't take you out so 
Father, that you have a foundation that you can stand on. So when that storm comes, it will go around you. Just like those pictures of tornado coming through. And there's a path of destruction, but there's a house standing that was never touched. You can be that house that is standing, that isn't touched by that destruction, that isn't touched by that storm, that isn't touched by that judgment. You can be that house. You can be the one who is able to stand when that storm comes. But there's only one way that it can happen, and that's by being built on that rock. And I got to make this really clear. You got to dig down. You got to get through all man made doctrine. You got to get through the religiosity. You got to get through the psychology. You got to get rid through all that social gospel. You got to get through all that fake love stuff that's going on, all that tolerance stuff that's going on, all that other stuff that's going on. You got to dig through that and get to the rock. You got to get down and build on the solid foundation. It may sound good. It may ease your conscience for a little while. It may make think you're all right because you go to church and your name's on a book and the guy stands up there and tells you how good you are. That might soothe your conscience, but it's not going to stop that storm that's coming. It's not going to protect you when that judgment is poured out, when the wrath of God falls from heaven, there's going to be something like nobody has ever experienced before. Just that little description that I read to you in there ought to be enough to make you stop and think that when that fire falls, you better have on a fireproof suit. And the only way to get that on is by having this word. That's the only way that you can get that on. You've got to hear what the Spirit is saying. Dig down through all that stuff and being nice and being church members and being church people ain't gonna do it. I can't make that clear enough. This world has been so fooled and so deceived with this new gospel, with this get along stuff, with this tolerance stuff, with this love stuff, with, with all this unity stuff. Everybody's being deceived by it. I'm gonna tell you something. There is one way and one way only. Jesus said, I am the way and this is his way and you gotta be founded on that. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and this is the word this is the word that you have to build on you've got to be built on this and founded on this no matter how old-fashioned you think it sounds no matter how outdated you think it sounds you go back to where I started there that same God that was telling them about turning away from him is the same God that speaks today and it is born in America and the rest of the world you have turned away from me you have found other God you have built on the sand and when the storm come, your house is going to fall flat. You are going to be destroyed. You need to get on that rock. Thank you, Lord. I wish I could make it clear. I wish I could show you a picture of the devastation that's coming, but I can't. The Spirit can, but you've got to hear the voice of the Spirit. You've got to listen to the voice of the Spirit. There's so many voices out of so many pulpits and so many Bible colleges and so many theological institutions and so many well-known pastors and so many voices out there. We can't hear the voice of the Spirit. Amen. We need to stop and listen to the voice of the Spirit. That still, small voice. Come on. When all those other voices are shouting and yelling and carrying on and going on, you can't hear that small voice. Amen. You need to get quiet and get alone with God and speak to God. And I'm going to tell you something you can do. You speak to God and you ask Him. You show me. I want to know the truth. You show me. If you seek Him with your whole heart, you will find Him. Amen. That's a guarantee. If you go searching for Him, if your heart's desire is to truly find Him, you will. The Bible tells us that you will. The problem is so many of us have been deceived by what's coming out of the pulpits and the, the institutions and, and the religious system that we've never stopped to hear the true voice of God. We've accepted what all the other things are saying. We need to hear the voice of God. Just listen to Him. You don't have to hear me. Hear the voice of the Spirit. Go and get alone and get quiet and open your heart to God and listen for that still small voice. If you really want to know, He will tell you. Go and do that. Don't take my word for it. Listen to the voice of the Spirit. 
go and find a place where you can get alone and hear Him. Because I'm telling you, it's coming. It's coming quick and it's coming soon and it's coming hard. And unless you're built on that rock, destruction is what waits for you. That's all that I've got. I, I just pray that you take this and if you don't believe anything I've said, you go check it out with God. You get in the Word and, and read it for yourself. And let the Spirit speak to you. Let Him tell you, then you'll know that it's true. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, God, for the opportunity you've given us to stand and look into your Word once again. Lord, I thank you that you are such a merciful and a gracious God. As your Word says, you are slow to anger and full of mercy. You just keep giving us chance after chance after chance. I thank you, Lord, that you've sent another message, Lord, to warn those who are out there. I thank you, Lord, that you have shown them, God, the way that they can be founded on that rock. I pray, God, that anyone that hears this message, Lord, is not founded on the rock. Lord, that this message will sink in, that you will speak to their hearts, Lord, and show them their need for a Savior. Show them, Lord, where they need to build. I pray, God, that you would just anoint this word, Lord, that it would go forth, and that it would bring those in, Lord, that you intend to bring in. Thank you, God, for all of your blessings, for the privilege and the opportunity to stand. Thank you, God, for those gathered here. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless.